welcome back to Doodle Therapy, a new drawing show here on Adobe Live. It's great to be back. Hi to everyone who's popping in from the chat. Um, I'm your host, Alice, and um, I see we're joined here by Tom from France, um, Siba, um, Louis, uh, if you're in the chat, definitely give me a shout and say hi and uh, let me know where you are joining in from and we can do kind of like a location-based roll call. I'm here in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. Hi to Jennifer and Renad and uh, Sue, Sue Bigyan. Sorry if I uh, said your name wrong. Hi to Anna and Rosie, also from the Bay Area. Um, Hey, Pascal from Belgium. Wow, and Andrew from the UK. Um, so good afternoon to those who are uh, on the West Coast of the US. Um, hi to everyone, or good evening and good morning to everyone else um, who's dialing in from other countries. Hey, Subu, uh, thanks for that. Hey, Tanya from Mexico. Wow, and uh, Dana from Spain. Hey to Maggie, um, Maggie and Rory. Um, cool, it's great to be back. Uh, I missed you guys um, and uh, it's been a couple of weeks, but um, it's really exciting to have Doodle Therapy back as a show here. Oh, and uh, thanks to Paco for the note about the music being a little loud. Um, so if you're new to Doodle Therapy, um, this is a brand new drawing show here on Adobe Live, like I mentioned. Um, basically, this is a time and a space for us to just get together, um, and ha just chill out and share how we're doing both in the conversation and in our drawing. So we're basically just gonna be drawing together every week. Um, and because this is an interactive drawing show, um, every week we're gonna have a regular drawing prompt. Um, so in the past, you know, we've drawn past uh, moments of joy that we've experienced or um, we've painted landscapes for fun. Um, and also, uh, this show is for doodlers of all ages and skill levels. So if you've got a pen, if you got a piece of paper or Photoshop or, you know, your iPad, uh, feel free to pull that up and just doodle along. Um, and, uh, yeah. Oh, th hi, D hey, Dana. Thanks for the kind words. Um, yeah, so... The way that this is going to work this week, though, is going to be a little different. So typically, like I mentioned, we have a weekly doodle prompt, which we're still going to do and we're still going to all draw along together. However, we normally run a giveaway submission challenge along with that. So um, every week, you know, you're encouraged to submit your drawing to the Photoshop Discord or on social media by tagging me. And I usually select, you know, a few winners to receive a prize in the mail, like a sticker pack or some prints. And you're totally still encouraged to share um, in the Photoshop Discord or on social media if you'd like, and I would love to see your work. But instead of doing a submission challenge this week where, um, you know, we submit our drawings to social media, I'd like to actually encourage you instead to donate to any Black Lives Matter related nonprofit. Um, and I will be personally matching any donations made to any Black Lives Matter, Matter related nonprofit with an equivalent donation to the NAACP, which will also be donated by, uh, which will also be matched by my friend with her corporate match. So for every $1 that anyone via this stream uh, contributes to any BLM related nonprofit, that will be 3 x with my match, my friend's match, and your original dollar. And, um, yeah, I'm going to uh, drop a link into the chat uh, that has a really great starting point of different resources that you can check out. Um, and I recognize that, you know, not everyone is in a position where they can donate and that's totally cool. You know, we all show up and um, support in the ways that we can. Um, so this uh, link has links to other nonprofits that are related to um, different, you know, causes under uh, the Black Lives Matter movement. And there's also ways that you can donate without actually contributing financially. Um, so definitely give that a, check that out. Um, and you know, the reason why I want to do this is because I think that this is a really special community. Um, you know, we're all creatives, we're designers, we're artists, illustrators. I'm a muralist, you know, so we often are creating work that has 
really powerful and important messages behind it, whether that's for our own projects or for companies or for our nonprofits. And so, you know, our work and our voices are powerful. And as a community, we are powerful. And I think that um, right now, we should come together as a community and use this platform and our voices to speak out and to support um, an important movement like the Black Lives Matter movement. And I think we can all do that together. So that was kind of my um, thought process behind switching out the daily, sorry, switching out the uh, doodle challenge to instead, instead of being, um, you know, submitting a drawing this week to instead to, you know, to support and to show up. Yeah, so um, let me know if you have any questions. Um, and thanks to Sam for uh, dropping in the link to the Photoshop Discord. You're totally still encouraged and I would love to see, you know, any drawings that you create this week. Um, yeah, thanks, Pascal. So uh, yeah, actually, um, so a little bit about me. Um, I'm Alice, like I mentioned. I'm an illustrator and a muralist. I'm based in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, here's some of my work you can see in the corner. Um, you may have most recently seen my murals and illustrations at places like um, the Asian Art Museum in San Francisco, at Phil's Coffee or Coach. <clears throat> and I also have illustrated a lot for various tech companies as well. Sorry. Um, yeah, and so like I mentioned, you know, this show is all about coming together, chilling out, just sharing how we're doing. It's a calm, relaxing space. So just grab a cup of tea uh, or your preferred, you know, warm glass of water. Um, pull up your favorite drawing utensil, whether that's, um, you know, a digital tool like Photoshop or even just a piece of paper, a crayon, and um, draw along. Um, so this week, I just have a really simple question to all of you, which is, um, how's everyone doing? Like, how's, how's it going? Um, I know that, you know, we've experienced uh, a lot recently with current events, um, first with coronavirus, and now we're seeing, you know, a lot of the injustices uh, of, you know, police brutality and the Black Lives Matter movement coming to the light. And it's really, you know, it's really all just coming together and being pushed to the forefront with media reporting and stuff like that. So I know that it can be also really overwhelming on an individual level. And I would just like to ask, you know, how's everyone doing? Um, for me, I have felt really angry. I felt really sad. I felt upset and also very overwhelmed. And so the challenge that I'd like to, um, for us to do this this week is basically related to how we're all doing. We're going to be drawing our feelings. And this is actually an activity that I've done um, twice before, once with an actual, my actual therapist and once with my friend who is a coach. And each time it was really powerful. So here's what I mean by that. Um, this first drawing that I did, this is kind of like an example. Um, I was literally just drawing how I was doing and I was going through this intense breakup. Um, and so I drew myself, this, this character is me, and you can see that this drawing is very like spiky and angry and you know, I was really upset at the time. So I think that's like really reflected in the drawing. And then um, actually it got turned into a mural in my studio, which um, was really cool that I took it down. Um, and then a year later, I had really, I feel healed from that experience. And um, I was in a much more like peaceful place. So I ended up drawing this new version, um, which I think is a lot like softer and uh, rounder in a way. Um, and so for this week's challenge um, or this week's prompt is just to draw yourself and think about the feelings that you are experiencing and channel those feelings into your drawing as well. Um, I find it really powerful to uh, draw myself as a character and then almost like try to like personify the emotions that I'm feeling. So for example, when I was going through this really bad breakup, um, I drew myself almost like defensive. And then I drew all of the feelings, this like fierce, 
uh, upsetness in the characters and animals around me. And then like in this ex experience, I was feeling a lot more relaxed and calm. And so I drew that feeling of like having a new day or like a new dawn um, and that like that emotion sort of personified via these characters. So yeah, that's going to be our prompt today is we're going to be talking about our feels, but also drawing them out. Um, and uh, I see Howard says, um, amongst the sadness, also hopeful for the future. And I also feel um, a bit of hope for the future. I think one, um, one like the optis, optimist in me is really heartened by uh, the way that communities are coming together, especially in, my, in our communities, in design and tech, I'm seeing a lot of people raising money, matching donations, and yeah, so if you end up um, doing this week's uh, doodle challenge, which is to um, donate, definitely just DM me your receipt. Uh, I'll be matching up to $500, and then my friend will be matching, so hopefully we could raise, uh, you know, a little over $1,000 together uh, via this stream, which I think would be really cool. Um, DM me the receipt on Behance Instagram. Um, you can even DM me in the Photoshop Discord, the link to which Sam dropped above. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll do some good together. Um, so just to start off, the way that, you know, if you're joining and also drawing along, the way that I often think about this exercise is First, I just try to reflect on the feelings that I'm experiencing. So, like I mentioned, I'm feeling really overwhelmed is what it is. I mean, I'm, I'm feeling a lot of emotions like sadness and anger. I feel really upset and um, I feel really intensely just bad, I guess. Um, and I also am feeling hopeful of I was able to participate in a protest this past week, weekend, and it was it was actually really inspiring and moving. Um, so the sketch that I made so far is um, I drew myself in the middle, which is this character that you can see here, um, and I want to represent all of the feelings that I'm experiencing around me via these butterflies that are kind of like crowding the screen. And it almost is like overwhelming the character compositionally, right? Like this character, this butterfly in the middle is sort of almost like blocking that the character. Um, and I think as if you're drawing along as well, or if you're watching the stream later, um, and if you'd like to follow along with this activity, I would encourage you to think about yourself and yourself in relation to your feelings because one thing that um, therapy has actually taught me, which is, which is I think really kind of powerful and profound, is that like we experience our feelings, but we are not necessarily our feelings. If that makes sense. Like I feel sad, but I am not sadness. I'm Alice, and I am experiencing sadness, and it's a it could be a lot of sadness, but you know I there's there's you and then there's your feeling or there's your emotion um and uh and so when i do this activity i like to think about myself which is this character here but i also then like to think about how my feelings are being represented in the environment or the surrounding characters so i think for some of these butterflies i might draw them um you know with kind of like more intense patterns um, I might, currently in this like sketch version, I have all the butterflies that are like, they're just upright, but I might, you know, draw them at different angles, um, flapping around and kind of just varying it up a little bit. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if you'd like to join along, definitely feel free and uh, I'd love to see what you guys end up drawing. And I think if you'd like to share how you're feeling, um, it's kind of an overwhelming time for a lot of people and um, it's, I think, totally fine to share what you're experiencing that might actually help other people. But yeah, um, would also love to know, you know, just how's it going for everyone else? Like, um, how's it going in your area? Um, what's everyone up to? What are things that people are working on? 
these days or excited about. Um, I recently uh, got really into this video game called Animal Crossing and I got really into planting hybrid flowers. So I've just been like gardening a lot <laughs> in Animal Crossing. Hey to Sailor HG who's coming in and joining the chat. And um, I usually get a question or two about this. So I'll just preemptively say that I'm using Photoshop right now. Um, I am using, I'm using one of Kyle's brushes, but I actually renamed it to, uh, to a different name. Like, and then I forgot which brush pack it came from, but um, actually Kyle's brushes are free and available to anyone with the Creative Cloud subscription. So, um, yeah, definitely check that out if you are interested. Another thing that you can think about if you're drawing along is um, consider the feelings that you're experiencing, but also think about like, you know, if, if you were to physically hold that feeling, like physically, like tangibly, what would that feeling feel like? Is it a soft feeling? Is it a hard feeling? Um, what color is that feeling? You know, what what is its shape? Is it is it spiky? Is it round? Is it textured? Um, and uh, yeah, what what would that feeling look like if you were to, to draw yourself in relation to that feeling? Oh, uh, Renad asks if we can share the link to Kyle's brushes. Yeah, I think um, hopefully we can drop it in. Um, and uh, I think it's a really easy porting system. Like if you have Photoshop, it's really easy to add it in. And oh, thanks Jeffrey for adding uh, the link to Kyle's brushes. Ivy says that she is wrapping up the quarter and hasn't drawn in so long. Um, yeah, welcome back Ivy. Um, Ivy has um, participated in past doodle therapies as well. Um, so it's great to see you. Cool. So I right now am just going to outline these butterflies. And actually I think butterflies are really fun to draw because you can kind of make them, there's so many different butterflies. like. I've actually drawn butterflies for a client project in the past where I had to research like native uh, San Francisco butterfly species and um, butterflies have so many like interesting patterns, wing shapes, colors, um, some don't even really look like butterflies that maybe you know you or I would normally associate with uh, the species so I think that they're kind of a really versatile thing to draw. What I'd love to ask, ask them, what is everyone working on with respect to drawing these days? whether it's a personal project or a, um, a client project or that side project that, you know, you typically don't have really time for, but with coronavirus and shelter in place, uh, you know, a little bit more space has been opened up to work on that. Um, like I mentioned, I'm a muralist and so I have been trying to figure out ways to paint murals remotely in a way that is, um, you know, safe and mitigating risk. So if there's any other muralists in the crowd, uh, definitely let me know. Yeah, Sam says that things like butterflies are always really fun because, you know, you have a lot of freedom with colors and I totally agree. I mean, I'm really not thinking too hard about 
the final butterfly. I'm really just like getting in the flow of drawing and just whatever shapes feel right and whatever line just feels right. I'm just drawing that. Um, and my friends and I actually refer to this as the flow state. It's just, you're not really thinking too hard about what you're drawing. You, you probably have like a general plan, but um, I'm not really trying to second guess what I'm drawing. And I think that that's also a message that we've tried to um, promote here at Doodle Therapy is like, often as professional illustrators or hobbyist illustrators, we're thinking about the end product in mind, right? Like we're often drawing for a client or a company, our teams, or you might be even thinking like, how will this look on social media? And um, one thing that I would just love to promote in a way is drawing um, without being self-conscious. Oh, cool. Eduardo says butterfly is freedom. Uh, he likes it and Brazil has the largest biome, but you don't find much. Yeah, actually. Um, so I did research into uh, like native SF butterfly species. And um, I think like naturally a lot of places have very rich and diverse butterfly population populations, but you often don't see them if you live in a city because there are so many um, components of city living that drive away butterflies. For example, um, when we lay down streets um, that cuts away at butterfly habitats or um, a lot of natural noises of the city like uh, car sounds, traffic, pedestrians, that stuff like is very is very disruptive for butterflies. And so they'll like go somewhere else or, you know, if you're cutting down trees and stuff. so. Uh, it's actually kind of interesting to look at the natural butterfly populations that uh, originated in an area. It's also really interesting. I've seen a lot of um, news reports about how different animal species have um, sort of begun to like repopulate in city places because uh, as you know, the humans have been sheltering in place and I, I think that that's really uh, fascinating and I might look up uh, what shelter in place has done for um, butterfly populations um, as well. Cool, so I'm going to just duplicate. So what I did here is I drew one wing and then I, I duplicated it and then I flipped it horizontally. And then I'm just doing this to see what this looks like. So I don't know if I really like this part of the wing, but I might just shift it down and use it down here. Maggie says that she's been totally noticing more butterflies in their neighborhood during doggy walks. Awesome. Um, we have noticed uh, more animals in, in the backyard, which is so fascinating. Like uh, this little bunny came and showed up in my backyard. Um, the other day, a stray chicken, like a baby chicken entered our backyard and apparently it was from the neighbor and the chicken just like got loose and was just exploring other people's backyards, which is really cute. Um, a cat visited the other day, and so we put out water for it, but then we also put a security camera behind the water, so we watched it drink the water, which was very really cute. Thanks to Sam for uh, the links to my social media. If you are drawing along, um, I would love to see what you end up making. Or if you end up donating as part of the doodle challenge, um, you can totally ping me on any of those 
platforms. I'm by Alice Lee everywhere. Uh, here's my thing. Um, and you can also message me on the Photoshop Discord or on Beacons. Um, the cat did not meet the chicken. Yeah, uh, those were two separate incidents. So I'm just going to adjust some of the colors now. Um, you know, this is like a light sketch. Um, but I want to get at least like general tones down. Eduardo says maybe it's because they live closer to the city, but when they go to the countryside, um, the butterflies come at their feet. Oh, that's so cute. They have to go more to the countryside to be inspired. That's awesome. Butterflies are awesome. I love drawing butterflies. One um, activity that uh, I also really enjoy doing for drawing that might be helpful if you are following along is like sometimes I almost find client projects to be um, more like straightforward than when I do personal projects because there's more constraints involved and I think that constraints can actually be very helpful uh, with when it comes to like productivity and having an end product. Um, and when I draw for myself, I feel sometimes a little paralyzed because you know, you're your own client and it's easy to get really uh, critical or not really know what to draw. And so an exercise that one friend uh, told me about once was making, try to make a list of a hundred things that you know that you simply like drawing. It can just be anything. So on my list that I wrote, I mean, I wrote down like animals, I wrote down butterflies, fish, um, dogs, cats, plants, um, uh, strong women, you know, dots, just anything that, that just purely brings you joy to draw and um, try to get to a hundred if you can. And at the end of it, um, that will be, that's a really good like starting vocabulary for your visual language, if that makes sense. Like I know because I did that exercise, I know that I really like drawing animals. So I end up using animals a lot in my work. And in particular, like I've been saving butterflies for certain client projects because I just, I know that I would enjoy drawing them and you know whenever whenever I get a prompt that's that just feels right to use them I will you know use that particular symbol in my work so um, if you're feeling stuck about what to draw uh, that's a really fun activity that you can do Jennifer says their neighbor is drumming again. Uh, is it like in a, a good way or like, is it annoying? My neighbor is like a really old man. He's really nice, but he can't hear very well. So when he listens to, when he watches TV, he ends up watching it really loud. Um, and I, and I kind of feel bad sometimes like asking him to turn down his TV because I, you know, it's like his own space. So I actually got a noise machine, which uh, was very useful with uh, just blocking out city noise too. Hey, Clever, I saw you in the earlier chat. Clever wants, um, Taiko drums, are you a drummer?
So um, I know that also butterflies sometimes have like eyes on their wings. So I think that I'll draw some big eyes. Uh, Clover says that they want to beat giant drums. Oh, I see. Um, is anyone here a musician and playing any new songs? I play piano and I have, I found the Westworld theme song and I started playing it, which is really fun. Ooh, Sam says that he's thought about getting an electronic drum set and it would be fun to learn, but the hundred hobbies they'd like to do, they don't have time. Yeah, I totally feel you. Oops. Totally feel you on that. Cool, so essentially what I'm doing is, uh, for those who are just joining or new, our activity is to simply draw your feelings. Just draw how you're feeling. And for me, I'm feeling a lot of things, a lot of emotions and feelings. And it is a little overwhelming personally. So I am drawing um, myself as this character who is being overwhelmed with these butterfly characters. I'm doing it in Photoshop and um, Doodle therapy is uh, typically an interactive uh, drawing show where we have a challenge submission portion where, um, you know, if you submit something, uh, I'll usually select some winners to receive like a free giveaway. Uh, but instead this week we are doing a fundraiser for um, nonprofits that support the Black Lives Matter movement. So um, I'm gonna drop a link to again, to this great resource. Um, oh, I can't post it twice. Okay, well, um, I'm basically matching donations to any BLM related, BLM supporting or related nonprofit um, this week, up to $500 in donations. And my friend is also matching it with her corporate match. So um, hopefully together we can 3X a donation from the community um, to raise over $1,000 from this stream for Black Lives Matter related causes. And so I'm gonna be matching my donation to the NAACP, but any nonprofit that um, is advancing the cause would totally work. And all you have to do is DM me the receipt on Instagram, Behance, Twitter. My handle is at by Alice Lee uh, everywhere. You can even uh, message me in the Photoshop Discord as well. And yeah. Thanks for joining in. So I'm noticing that this is getting a little messy and there's a lot of um, layers now, so I'm just gonna group it. And then I have butterfly 01. Cool. That's a butterfly that I started, but I'm not super feeling it. So instead, I'm just going to duplicate it. Cool. And so we will be here both today and tomorrow. Um, so I'm starting this illustration and you are totally also invited to draw along, um, draw how you're feeling. And if you do that, I would really love to see it. Um, feel free to share it on social media as well. And, um, I'll, I'm happy to repost and stuff too, since we're not doing a giveaway challenge.
Cool, so I'm gonna draw this little butterfly here. Um, and I think that I'm going to make this butterfly a little bit more subdued um, because it's the one that's directly interacting with the character. And I think compositionally it might get a little crazy if I make this one super elaborate. Um, and also if anyone is wondering, um, the music that you are hearing in the background is by Lola Tone. They are an awesome um, band based in Japan and you should totally check them out. Uh, it's one of my favorite painting music to listen to. Um, I would love to know, is anyone watching any interesting TV shows lately? Or reading any interesting books? Christina says that she's reading Hustle and Float. BG's heading to Whole Foods, healing with Whole Foods. Sorry, I thought you were just saying I'm heading to Whole Foods. Just like informing the chat. And I was about to say like, cool, <laughs> have fun. Uh, healing with Whole Foods, cool. Um, Jennifer is reading Moretta's Ride from Anne McCaffrey. Jennifer, what is the book about? Um, hey, Tutunk, thanks for joining the chat. Hi. Tanya has a great question, which is the one color for me? That's a great question. And Tanya, I would, and anyone else in the chat, I would love to know your answer too. Um, so the one color for me is actually kind of this gradient. Um, I really like, I'm, I'm like way too comfortable with this blue to green, I'm sorry, blue to pink um, gradient. Like it's, it's kind of like my comfort zone. Um, I just, I love, I love this gradient. I love it so much. It's like my favorite, my favorite colors. Um, and I use it a lot. I, I will often use it, um, I think for a lot of my favorite projects, like a lot of my favorite murals are in this color palette. Um, yeah, and I think I I actually fall back on this palette a lot. It's kind of like a crutch sometimes. And so I often work to challenge myself in the palettes that I'm working with, especially with mural painting. Um, because, you know, when you paint with murals, you have an inherently semi-limited palette because it's just the number of paints that you have. Um, but yeah, I'd love to know if anyone has like the one color or like, a particular palette that you're feeling. Um, for me, it's a lot of 
these really soft pastels. And then I'll love to like throw in a, you know, a little like yellow accent or something, like a little highlight in there. And um, yeah, this is like my favorite, favorite color range to play with. But I have to be careful to not like overuse it or get complacent with it. go again using this palette. Ooh, Christina says a sea green and a light blue is a nice combo that she ends up using a lot lately. Ooh, a sea green and a light blue. This is actually really helpful because maybe I'll just end up using these colors in my in my drawing. Um, like you can even see, I did the original sketch in in uh, with blue with pink colors, but so Christina is saying a sea green and a light blue. Ooh, a sea green. Okay, so this is like light blue, a sea green. I <laughs> keep saying that. Like, is that like an aqua green? Like, that's a nice. I like that. Nice combo. I like this. Could throw in like. for a little variation. Um, Jennifer says they always try to use either green or red. Ooh, very interesting. Um, yeah, so here's green and here's red. That's more of pinkish, but I'm a little cautious when I use red and green together because I don't want it to look Christmassy, but I can see how like maybe you could throw in some other really bright like primary colors. an orange and yellow to kind of make it equally as bold in your palette. Or do a bright blue. That'd be cool. Ooh, making color color palettes is really fun. If anyone has any other um, favorite colors that they use, definitely let me know. I would love to make a little palette to use. Um, let's see, Tanya says, for me, purple and blue. That's also my faves, but I'll try to push it. I really love using this um, super saturated blue, like the other end of the spectrum, like that. It's a really nice color, and I think I got really inspired because one of my studio mates um, has a risograph machine, and um, this very vibrant blue is a risograph color. Uh, risograph is a special kind of printer that um, it's kind of like an old type of printer that uh, a lot of like designers that I know are really into printing on. Let's see. So Laura says, always blue or green for me. Often I mix them both and have dark turquoise-ish. Ooh. So you've got the green, it's the palette. And then you mix, mix them both and add dark turquoise. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I'm working on this mural that is um, like an underwater kind of scene right now. So this is actually kind of kind of uh, relevant for, for my work. Um, Christine's sa Christina says, coral with a nice orange is also a good combo. Yeah, I love coral. Coral is like one of my favorite colors. I was organizing my mural paints the other day and I was like, just like, oh my God, uh, the number of like variations of this coral pink that I have. Just can't get enough of it. And then an orange. Cool, thanks to everyone for submitting your um, favorite colors. I might end up uh, using some of these combinations in my uh, butterfly feelings drawing. Um, maybe when we join up tomorrow, I'll have more um, done and you can kind of see, but this has actually been really fun. Um, for me, like, like I mentioned, I really tend to stay within this gradient. Um, 
when when I want to. Obviously, I can work in other colors too, but it's just my favorite. It's like, it's, if left to my own devices, you know, I love this gradient. It's all a lot of my furniture is in this color, so um, it's really fun to explore other people's favorite colors or favorite ranges. Um, Eduardo asks, I think you're asking if um, you work, if you ever create like a simple base, like a foundation of colors, and then you add like various gray layers for shading and lighting. Um, sometimes I do that. Um, I, yeah, I, I we usually kind of get my core color down first before I move into lighting. Uh, I think it's really easy to like over render a section and just like render the heck out of this butterfly without figuring out the rest of the piece. And I think that it's more important to figure out um, the overall color palette before you really go all in on one section. Because if there's something then you have to change, then you have to start over and it's a little inefficient. I hope that answered your question. Uh, let me know if it doesn't or if you have any clarifications. Um, Maggie says that she likes varying pinks similar to my palette mixed with greens. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Me too. Um, so yeah, we're almost reaching the end of the stream. We've got about 10 minutes left. So I just wanted to say thanks to everyone for joining. Um, we did doodle therapy for a couple weeks uh, last month and um, now we're back this month. So thanks to everyone for tuning in and for supporting. Um, like I mentioned, if you're just joining the stream now, um, we usually have a weekly doodle activity, which we're doing today, which is drawing your feelings and asking each other how we're doing. And typically I would invite people, invite you to share your drawing on social media and then I'll pick like a winner. But this week instead, I'd like to direct our community's energy and attention towards raising money for um, any nonprofit that's related to the Black Lives Matter movement. And I will be matching um, all donations that are made up to $500 with an equivalent donation to the NAACP. And my friend has also agreed to match via her corporate match as well. So any dollar that our community donates to a nonprofit in this space um, will be 3X'd with my match and her match. Um, and I really feel passionately about this. Um, I think that we're, as designers and artists and illustrators, you know, our work is inherently powerful. Like, I think design and I think art is really powerful, especially at a time like this. And um, one way that we can come together as a community and use our voices for good, I think, is to donate to these nonprofits. Um, that are doing really tremendous work. So um, I've uh, included a link in the chat. Oh, thanks, Jeffrey. Uh, Jeffrey has included a link in the chat to um, that. This, this is not, I did not create this link. I'm, I'm just sharing a resource, but this link has aggregated a lot of different resources for ways to support um, Black Lives Matter. And it also has links to different nonprofits that you can donate to. And there's different categories. There's bailout funds, there's um, donations to victims' families. Um, there's nonprofits like the ACLU or NAACP. So um, definitely take a look and um, and thank you for joining along as well. If you end up sharing your artwork, I would still really love to see what you end up creating. Um, so feel free to upload it either on social media and just tag me at by Alice Lee, or you can also put it in the Photoshop Discord. Oh yeah, and thanks to Jeffrey for adding that you can send a receipt to me and then I will count that as part of our community's total. And actually so far, I, I tweeted about this and so far we have raised quite a bit of money. So I think it's awesome. Okay, I think I'm done with that butterfly. I'm gonna keep drawing more butterflies.
And what I'm doing here is I'm I'm just drawing one half of the butterfly. I'm not sure if I want to keep all the butterflies in this straightforward orientation and have it just be a really graphic image, like very just punchy and kind of like abstract, or if I want to draw the butterflies in different angles. I still haven't decided yet, but um, to kind of explore that, I'm just drawing one half of each butter butterfly right now, and then I'm going to merge the layers. Um, and then I'm noticing this shape is kind of weird, so I'm gonna do it a little bit. Ooh, um, Sam is streaming in a little over an hour, so definitely go check, check it out. Um, and thanks to Sam for being a great moderator today. Let me know if you know if you have any questions about any of my process as well for what I'm doing. Um, I really enjoyed our chat about pal color palette and in past streams, you know, we've talked about different Photoshop functions. I've personally learned a lot of shortcuts that I use um, today from uh, other guests on Adobe Live. So it's kind of cool, like it's cool to discover the new features that Photoshop has. Like I've been using, personally, I've been using Photoshop for like over a decade. And there's all there's always new features that I didn't even think about. Oh, hey, Anna, welcome to the stream. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, I'm not really trying to like be very precious with my work in, in the sense that I'm not trying to like make something necessarily that's perfect or pixel perfect. I just, I'm trying to draw to express myself. I'm just trying to think about the shapes that I'm feeling inside and get that on on paper. So I feel like kind of overwhelmed with a lot of feelings. So uh, you can see like a lot of my Shapes that I'm drawing have a lot of edges and contours, um, and hopefully just, you know, a lot of movements. Hey Anna, thanks for saying that. Um, it's great to see you again. I hope you're doing well. So this is a trick that I actually learned from Roman Muradov's stream. Um, essentially here I've drawn the outline of the wing and I can either, you know, color in the wing, which I can do to, if I want a particular kind of texture. But um, if I also want to just save time and fill, if you just do the paint bucket tool, you're going to end up with this like jagged line that's just the edge because we are using a brush with textured edges. Um, so instead, you can use the wand tool, which is up here where you press W, select. And you can see, you know, even the edges are not perfectly clean, right? There's going to be this. If I just did that, it'd be the same issue. But you select it and then you can use the expand selection feature to expand your selection. And you can set the number of pixels that you want to do. So, okay, I did I did 10, which is a little bit much, but do five. And then the whole thing is selected beyond the bounds. So then when I uh, just paint bucket that, or I, can, I use gradient actually, um, I can then just really quickly fill in the rest. So I hope that's helpful. Um, so yeah, you know, we're almost at the end of our time, but I just want to say thanks to everyone for tuning in to the first little therapy of the month. Um, it's been a blast. It's always really fun to kind of hang out with everyone here in the chat. Um, and it's great to see some familiar faces. Um, if you end up donating as part of our uh, like challenge, please DM me your receipts. Um, and you can do that anywhere you know, to me at By Alice Lee. We'll be back here again tomorrow for day two, along with all the awesome other streams that we saw earlier today, like lettering with Ann Chen, 
Um, and uh, I'll be back again. And then if you end up um, drawing uh, along with our challenge, feel free to also share with me. And I would I would love to you know share it on on tomorrow's stream or you know post it up on my own social media. Uh, but we're just not doing a giveaway this week, which we normally would do. So yeah, thanks to everyone for um, joining along and um, it's been fun. Take care and um, yeah, have a good day everyone.